you know about the steel overcapacity issue as one of the country's experts in, in the steel industry and steel workers. Ohio's lost 4,900 jobs in iron and steel. Last week, we received news that the U.S. steel plant in Lorraine, uh, west of where you grew up on Lake Erie, would permanently idle its number six quench and temper facility. Our steel industry, our steel workers suffer because our trading partners don't play by the rules. China's state-owned properties have propped up its steel sector and flooded the global market, including our country, with unfairly made steel. The same is true, as you know, in aluminum. My question is, what does the United States do to get China to implement a net, re a net, a net reduction of its steel and aluminum capacity? And if China refuses to reduce its net steel and aluminum capacity, what steps do you take in response? Senator, first of all, let me thank you for your kind words. I do appreciate that. Um, I'm proud to be from Ohio. I've been to Lorraine, to the Lorraine facility, absolutely. So, um, uh, I, so I appreciate that. You're, and and I'm, I'm glad that Ashtabula, besides your wife and me, has Urban Meyer. And I, I'm sure there are other people, but they don't come to mind. My brother, I guess my brother. Um, <laughs> We have talked a little bit about this issue of Chinese overcapacity in steel and aluminum, and it is something that is that is troubling to me, not just because of those products, but because it's a model for the for the Chinese industrial policy. And to some extent, we have sort of two models of 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 uh, two economic models. One is the one that we want and espouse, and one is a different one, which is one of more state control. Uh, and, and straight involvement, and in many cases, it's, 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 it's non-economic. Um, yeah, what I have said is that we have to have a kind of a comprehensive approach on this. We have to, one, address in the various four that we have the Chinese overcapacity issue and push back on that. And some, some, some of those uh, discussions have possibilities for, for, uh, for, for results. The Global Forum would be a good example. Uh, although, uh, personally, I don't think that's going to be the only answer. The second thing is really going to be enforcing our own trade laws. Um, the third thing I suggested is that, that we um, get others to enforce their trade laws, all with an effort to, to make the maintaining of uneconomic um, capacity and the creation of uneconomic capacity, which is in the state of steel, massive. I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds of, of millions of of tons of excess capacity, much more than many times the United States total capacity. Uh, and then thirdly, I think um, we have to sit down uh, and have private discussions where we try to think about what other, what other, um, what other remedies we have. Um, to me, the objective is to make it uneconomic, to make it expensive to do something that's, that adds inefficiency in the market. And, and has such a negative effect on the United States and quite frankly still produces in other parts of the world. So it's a multifaceted approach that I would recommend, but I think part of it is going to be uh, sitting down and deciding whether we knew, need new remedies ourselves uh, and, and what those remedies would be. And we'd like to work with you to figure that out.